Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to try and install an oil pressure gauge on my 1984 Vanagon Westphalia. Here's the kit itself made by Glowshift out in New Jersey. What you basically have is obviously the gauge itself. It's a digital gauge, 10 different colors. I think I'm going to go with red. This sandwich adapter that really goes between the engine block and the oil filter. And as I've seen, it looks pretty easy. You plug the sensor into one of three ports. You block off the ports that you're not using. So here's the sensor right here. That's going to plug into, I'm not sure which one yet. One of these ports, supposedly plenty of clearance. This plugs into it. Looks like it has a weather fitting. Nice snug plug and go there. It's extra length wire to adapt it because as you know on the van again, the engine's in the back and we gotta go all the way from the back to the front. So, adapter, sensor, plug, and then that plug, the other end of the plug, is this fitting, and that goes back into the back of the glow shift gauge. That all seems pretty straightforward. The tricky part for me will be the way I want to install and where I want to install the gauge. This goes into the back of the gauge, and this, is, this gets its power. So this is Oscar, it's our 1984 Vanagon Westphalia. There's very little information if you're driving my year Vanagon. What you did have was this idiot light. That is an oil pressure that, as I've read on the Samba and other places, is very temperamental. Now I have been doing modifications to Oscar. I put a light bar and a voltmeter and a what I call a camping lamp. But I've, I've done all that and I've tried to make it all centrally located right here, all the wiring. It's just easy to get to. I think it looks clean. This is plastic. Uh, it's easy to cut and there's plenty of room back there to run wires. It's not too bad and I can hide it pretty well. So all my wires actually are underneath this carpet and you can't really see pretty seamless installation. So I'm gonna try and continue with that theme with the Glow Shift digital gauge. My thought was I would center it right here just to look clean. I might have to put it over here. Um, I can't put it there because that's gonna look messy. Uh, so that is my thought. Doesn't seem that far, but with the wiring that is included in the kit, I'm gonna have to do some finagle. Okay, second guessing time. I'm wondering, do I use the gauge pod that was included in the kit to just mount it right there I don't know, it's not that, it's not that bad. Just trying to figure out how I'm gonna wire this. Uh, here's the, um, I have the 12 gang on my 84. Uh, this is my Bentley, but I printed this out separately. Uh, I had to use 11 or 12. That would be the turn signal or the horn and backup lights. That'll be the last two. Behind one of these two is gonna be a spade connector that I can hook it to, and that's gonna be key powered. Okay, disclaimer, as you know, whenever working on a vehicle's wiring, disconnect your battery. So if you accidentally tap something, or make a contact, you don't short everything out and cause a whole bunch of electrical mischief. This would be the engine battery. Have everything labeled. Okay, here we go, try not to touch anything. And I put the carpet underneath there so it doesn't make a contact. Oh, there we go. Battery disconnected. And we'll double check. Nothing. So we're good. Okay, I've disconnected the screw that holds the fuse panel here. And I thought it would drop down, but it's not without. I can't stand wiggling things on a fuse panel because I'm just worried that's gonna make more problems. Okay, I've been fiddling with it for a while and I'm having a bear of a time getting to the back of fuse 11 and 12 without messing too much of the panel up. And I think temporarily I am going to just go to one of the leads on the fuse to see if I can get power to it and get it all running. And then uh, later on down the road, I'm gonna see if I can get back there. All right, I routed the wiring. Just to see how it fit, we got plenty of room. That's through the vent that I showed you down to. Plenty of distance here with the fuse panel. It's about 45 minutes later, and I decided just to test the concept 
that I was just going to, I tack soldered uh, the power um, to number 12 on the fuse. I grounded it here. Turn the key on. All right, we're gonna connect it. And we have power. Looks like it starts in blue and then you cycle through the colors. That's kind of a bummer. I'd like for it to be red every time. Maybe it's in the instructions. But hey, that's good. We have power to it. Okay, so we got dash panel back on. Here is the power. That's going to power the face unit of the meter. I tried to find a through hole through the firewall. Reached out through Van Alert. Great app if you don't have it, get it. Drilled a small pilot hole and then drilled through hole here and got a grommet and that's where my wire is gonna feed through. It's gonna go under the carpet, up through here, and up through there, and back up to here. Goes through here, through the back. I went down this vent. I think this vent's still gonna be mostly functional. That's the defrost vent. It runs straight down through here. I routed it through and passed or underneath and behind the um, steering column. It comes down through here and across. The only exposure is right here. I was comfortable with just drilling and putting it through here. I got a grommet and DevCon silicone adhesive, so it should be weather tight there. My only concern is the clutch pedal may rub it, so I'm gonna um, get a, a zip tie and zip tie it back a little bit farther and tuck it up in there. I can still make that cleaner. But I'm very pleased with the power function of it right in my line of sight. I was a little bit dubious of the pod, so I kind of like the pod now. Okay, so I've got it wired up. I got the pod mounted. It was actually the next day. Uh, the tape that they gave me didn't stick well at all, so I actually used adhesive here. I didn't want to drill. So that's nice and sturdy. So it's all wired up, it's keyed, it's powered. Now the next thing is to do the sandwich adapter so that the sensor will actually get a reading from the oil and this thing will actually do something rather than just blink. Maybe I did this in reverse. I think most things that you would read or see would have me start at the actual sensor there on the engine. But I wanted to make sure that I got, you know, everything wired and powered. Uh, Cause to me, that was the tricky part. So now I'm gonna switch to what I hope is the easy part and actually hook up the sensor to the uh, engine block and the oil filter. So let's see how that goes. Next step here is Putting the sandwich adapter on Oscar, where the oil filter goes. Here's what comes in the kit, the Glow Shift kit. We've got the sandwich adapter, which is this black piece here. The sensor will go in one of the four point ports that are on the sandwich adapter. I'm not sure which one. I'm gonna put it up to Oscar the van and see, given the mounting situation, which one's gonna be best. And then, since there are four of them, one will be the sensor, we'll plug up the other three. Apparently I need to put Teflon tape around those. And then that's all gonna mount using this brass fitting through here onto the oil filter. So next step is to get under Oscar, take off the oil filter and see how all this is gonna fit. So there's my, there's my filter. Uh, it's a new filter and I'm gonna take it off and put it back on. Apparently I'm not gonna to lose too much oil, so we're gonna see how that goes. Hopefully I can do it with just a strong hand here. There we go. Keep on coming. There we go. All right. Yeah, and that looks like the brass fitting. So now I'm mounting the lead that's going from inside the cab to right there, sealed up with the gasket and the DEFCON silicone. It's up in the wheel well. I wanna make sure it stays well out of the way of everything. I had these cable mounts that I thought about using a self-tapping screw. I don't wanna screw into here. So I'm using DEVCON silicone adhesive there. Just want it to really just hold it up out of the way. I don't really care that it closes. So I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna let those cure. Now I'm going to just zip tie it 
to any of the coolant lines that I can find. All underneath the van, along there, all the way to the back. Make sure I have enough link to attach to the actual uh, sandwich app. Okay, I've run into a bit of a situation here. The length of the wire running to the back of the engine is not long enough without me running into some complications. I don't like where it's ending up near the manifold and everything. Barely enough length when I run over the control arm here. I don't like that. It's just a lot of movement and that's too close. So I've got a new idea. The kit came with the original, what I assume is the original length of wire for this connector. So I'm actually gonna cut here. It's just these three wires. I'm gonna splice it to the line that I already have on the van. And then I'm gonna have plenty of room. Taking the extra plug wire that came with it. I've stripped the ends of this. Now I'm going to attach it to the, the two uh, wire leads that the kit came with to make one really long one. So we should have plenty of length now. I just tightened the two port covers. There's one left that I need to do and one for the sensor. I'm gonna dry fit this and see which port cover I'm gonna go into. Sandwich adapter is on, three ports covered up, everything with Teflon tape, hand tightened. There's where the sensor is gonna plug in. Well, it is now a week later after I first started the project because when I went to put on the oil filter, it didn't fit. It hit the exhaust, the new sandwich adapter. It was a 1.9 that was converted to a 2.1 with the engine rebuild. Probably once that rebuild went on, I mean, I was a half inch, maybe even a quarter inch. I don't think more than one inch out. It was hard to tell because of the coupling of the filter. But long story short, the oil filter didn't fit. Very frustrating because it's so simple. Uh, so it's been a week. I went and researched. Thank you so much, everybody on the Samba and Van Alert. I said, hey, my filter isn't fitting. Anybody recommend one? And did a man oil filter, a W917. So it's actually great for the van again, made in Germany. Um, so we're gonna try that. This is so much squattier. I'm worried it's a little bit squattier and too thick because the other one went to about where this O-ring ends. So I've got at least half an inch, three quarter inches here that I've got to worry about clearing, but it's almost half as tall. So let's see. All right, success. We have a snug man, W917. Okay, I'm still cracking up that it's dark. And this is a week later, but that's life. Working on these old vans. We wouldn't have it any other way, would we? Here we go. That's reading zero. Ooh, got some valves clacking. Oh, that sounds better. Let's change it to match. Look at that. We're gonna let it get the temperature see what our leak situation is. See if anything is spewing oil. Oh yeah. Yikes. Oh. All right, the adventure continues. So I put the man oil filter on there and it was really snug as you could see and it was scraping on the paint and uh, I couldn't get it tight enough. So we had that leak and what it was scraping on was, I guess this is a heat shield that's up against the manifold scraping right here in fact that's some, I've got to cut this out and then that should clear me some room because I can't go through this every time we do an oil change so we keep we keep pushing onward definitely getting a hand workout here but it is working and that is extremely sharp metal I'll have to file that down here's the same heat shield cut I actually cleaned it up a little filed off the sharp edges and let's see how it goes all right there's the trimmed heat shield back on and as you can see now i have plenty of room to get the man oil filter back on so no more scraping there you can see where it scraped the paint but that's not going to happen anymore 
I've run my wires to or much more to my liking. I've got it coiled up here. There's tons of length left after I splice the two wires together, but better be safe than sorry. That's tucked up out of the way. The wire goes from that coil, runs along this coolant line here, follows the coolant line all the way up to right here, up and over. And I got those cable ties that I silicone adhesive there. And then up through into the cab. Time to go for a test run. We're at idle here. We're reading eight. We are at temperature. Engine is uh, to temperature. We're going down the hill right now, 54 PSI. I don't have a tachometer, so I don't know what I'm running. 24, headed up the hill, don't know my tack, but that's about 30 miles an hour. Okay, done with the test drive. Uh, I would say the average reading that I got was in the upper 20s range. Uh, going downhill at idle, I was at a low of 8. So my low was around 8 or so, and my high was around uh, upper 40s. Average of around 20s, which from what I've read on the Samba seems to be about correct. So kind of pleased with that. Wrapping up this DIY install on the Glow Shift oil pressure sensor. I got mine from Ken Wilford at Vanagon. I'd highly recommend getting yours from him. He comes with great technical support and uh, just a good guy to work with. The product itself, I got no problems with. Really the only suggestion that I would have for the product would be, I like to have that red light and you have to cycle through, in my instance, three little presses of that button to go from blue to green to red. So it'd be nice if you could press it and hold it and it would always come up red, not a big deal. I didn't wire mine to go into the headlight switch so that it would automatically dim. The wiring is there if you wanna do that. I just didn't think it was necessary, it's not that bright. There was all the rest of the wiring I needed for the kit and the sandwich adapter with the oil filter was very easy to install. The oil filter I was using was too big. Once I switched to the man, which was a shorter filter, plenty of clearance, but then I had that freak thing with the heat shield. I'd say the kit was great. Just with these vans, you're gonna run into situations that you would never think of that's only gonna be particular to your old van, but that's the joy of why we have them. Enjoy your van, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit like and subscribe.